Hey, Zen Private of Brooke here, and uh, just continuing talking with you about what I'm experiencing getting going through this like cancer journey, and I'm still not feeling fearful, um, and I feel really good. I, I I I am feeling very positive and happy and good, and my surgery is about three weeks away, um, and I wanted to share with you some of the things that I found that around research and and how to do this with the big bad internet out there that's often scaring people. Um, when I first had the diagnosis, I, I jumped on and I um, started doing some research and I noticed that as I'm reading through the sites, I would get this tightness in my body as I was thinking about the things that they were talking about happening to me. And this is before, I mean, so one of the things that's really interesting is, is there's the mammogram and the, you know, that says there's something there, right? And then they leave you alone, <laughs> basically with that information and a follow-up visit. And there's like two weeks, three weeks in between that and the biopsy and you're alone. There's no one to really talk to. I mean, there are pe women that I know in my life that have had breast cancer, but it's not the same. And what I've discovered was that it's all completely and totally unique. Cancer is a unique journey. You could have, there's all these tests, there's all these genetic experiences. So for instance, a lot of people don't know that some people are chemo resistant and there's tests that you can take. So whether chemo is a good job, good for you or not, depends on whether or not you're chemo, you know, accepting or chemo resistant. I'm not sure if it's the word accepting, so forgive me, but I know there's a chemo resistant conversation out there. So if somebody says to you what their chemo journey was like, Yours may not be like that. And then there's all these different elements. So for instance, for me, I was positive estrogen, positive progesterone. And what that means is, is that my cancer is fu partially fueling itself off of progesterone or could partially fuel itself off of progesterone and estrogen. And so there's also this HERS, H-E-R-2, HER2 or HERS2 with an S, I'm not quite sure. And that is a protein that reproduces itself. And then once again, I'm not a medical technician, so please forgive me. But it, 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 it's, a, it's a protein that reproduces itself that, that, give, that it's generating its own food for the cancer, is how I understand it. So if you take progesterone out of my body or estrogen out of my body, um, and, I, and I don't have the HERS2, and I don't, protein, then it's much easier to, to shrink the tumor or to work with it in your body because that's part of its fuel source, where if it isn't, then you don't have that option. So there's all these elements. And then, and then I went in and I had a nutritional uh, genome test done and it went through and talked about all the different ways that my body processes things from folate to vitamin Bs to zinc to vitamin D3 and and all of these ways that my body processes stuff that's completely unique to me, which affects my various levels of health and even my capacity to be susceptible to breast cancer or other cancers. And that's not even talking the genetic test that I haven't even gotten back yet. It's two weeks before I had 91 things they tested me on cancer related in my, in my genetics. So there's all this stuff that makes it so individual. And so if you go out into the internet, like I was doing in the beginning, you could scare the shit out of yourself and there's, and not even, it might not even apply. Now, scaring yourself is closing all fear, worry, you know, anxiety, overwhelm, frustration, irritation, all of that stuff is closing. That's that You feel that tight, sick feeling. And you can look on my channel. I, I know that I described this. So I walk you through feeling it for yourself, but it's this thing where you get this tightness and that means what you're thinking isn't true. And so what happened for me was, is I luckily have developed this tool and I was out there reading all these options and possibilities and they were closing me. That meant that that's not true for me or that's not going to happen for me, literally. And I know that sounds wild, but I've not had it fail and I've taught thousands of people and I can trust this thing 100%. And so what happened was I'm reading and I'm trying to piece together what's going on and I didn't open to anything. So then my way of figuring things out and what I teach is to follow flow, which is an expanded feeling in your body that leads you from thing to thing to thing to thing. It's like playing the hot cold game when you were a kid. 
What I mean by that is they'd hide an object and blindfold you, and then all the kids would be like, as you're looking around for it in the dark, would be trying to guide you using hot, warm, cold, uh, coldest, Arctic, Sahara, super hot, right, and to find this object. Well, that's kind of how the IGS works with this expanding and contracting feeling. It, it's leading you via breadcrumbs, physically feeling it inside your body to where you're supposed to be. So I stopped searching on the internet, except for the night before I did my, I went in for my surgical consult with all the information. That was I, silly, I got on there, but my mind was driving me to get more information so I could make better decisions the next day, dumb. Anyways, um, and what I found was is that this flow has led me to a lot of solutions. So here's the really, really unbelievable cool thing. And I'm blown away. I, I'm emotional about it because it's so beautiful. I've been following flow for many, many years. Literally, I, I construct my day this way. And there's lots of other people who do it. And it works. You have... You waste less energy, you feel great, you're at peace, you get little closings and you re -cor you correct, auto-correct back to the, the where you were. And so over the years, I've been buying things for my health, supplements, gadgets. Um, I've, been, I've been collecting teachers that open me, that work for me and their information helps to keep me healthy and young and vibrant. Um, and what I found was, is that I went to one of the teachers, her name is Dr. Mindy Plez, P-E-L-Z, Plez. And um, she's on YouTube, she's fabulous, she's all about fasting. And over the years I've purchased products from her and then not used them, which is really weird. And I've got a, quite a few supplements that I've purchased in the opening that I haven't used, which would mean to me that I'm wasting my money and that this opening sensation that I'm following is not true. But every time I would think that I purchased the wrong thing or I wasted money or any of that, I would tighten, which means what I'm thinking isn't true. It, that's not true for me that I did this. So I went to her site and she was doing out of the blue, like that week, an interview with a woman who uh, does works with cancer and fasting and, and genetics and the same tests that I've been telling you about. And she has this great book called The Metabolic Approach to Cancer. So I got her book. I did the suggested tests that they recommend before you do any treatment or you try to do anything. And all of the protocols, guess what? I had the product in my cupboard. Now, if I were to buy these products now, all would be six or seven, eight hundred dollars. I mean, if they're these things over time, you know how much supplements are if you had to buy a bulk of things all at once. But I didn't have to. I think I was one thing that I didn't have. And which is amazing. I even had probiotics and stuff just sitting there that I wasn't taking. I didn't have the flow. Flow didn't lead me to taking that thing. And so what ended up happening is, is as I'm going through this journey, I would go to my cupboard or my fridge and pull out the thing that I needed. It was already there. And that's the key thing is what I find is, is when you follow this, you always have what you need before you need it. I already had Mindy who led me to this do cancer research doctor who led me to this genetic test. And the most amazing thing about this, this genetic test that I took is as I was reading through it, I had already been supplementing for my weaknesses in my genetic code, like the inability to, to absorb folate as well as I could. So I was supplementing with folate, but it's not just any folate. I was supplementing with a particular type of folate. The foods, I've been trying to quit coffee for years because it just is the smart thing to do. And it's never really, I've never, I woke up and I was like, oh, I want coffee and I'm open. So I'd have coffee waiting for that moment where I'd be open to quit it. Well, it turns out coffee is actually really important for me and my liver and other elements of um, brain, serendip brain serotonin levels and all these different things. I'm reading this report and through flow over the years, I've naturally shifted my lifestyle without any information, just based on my openings. And I've had everything I need before I need it, including this information after my big freak out with my surgery consult. Uh, so I, I was given information of a woman who went through it and we're almost identical, which I just explained to you how unusual that is. We're pretty much almost identical. 
and th what she went through. Out of the blue, I met a woman who just needed to tell me that a, a few things about the same surgery that she wishes she had known and s instructed the doctor on how to behave when he's in there, right? And it, these are just little things that I'm like, okay, that that is something I need that comes to you. You don't have to go out and reach for it and you don't have to try to figure it out and then get yourself all terrified and scared. Part of the reason why I'm having a fear-free cancer journey is because I can tell what's right for me and what isn't. And it feels like a, a deep, solid knowledge in my bones that this is right for me or it's not. It's so clear. So it's just been miraculous that, that, that everything that I've needed, and my motto has always been, I always have what I need before I need it. Another one is, is I don't know how, but it's all, this is going to end up being the best thing that could have happened. Um, these, these kinds of things are just consistently in this journey proving themselves to be true, which is uh, leading me into a place of very much um, gratitude. Once again, I just feel grateful that I've had this practice my whole life and that it's just continuing to work. And um, yeah, so, so this is just a little bit of a tip around how I'm managing finding the information that I need and the right books for me. I had someone recommend a book and I got it and I started reading it and it really was about prostate cancer, which does not apply fully. And there's information in there that, that, that there's great information and recipes that I love, but there's also some information that doesn't apply to breast cancer. So it's stuff like that where I'm like, wow, you know, um, little tiny things that are adding up to a big picture of feeling at ease, relaxed and joyful and happy and having what I need before I need it. So sending you love and blessings. Thanks for listening to all this. I appreciate it. Go forth and have a great day. Bye.